So while the breathability is much better on the way up, I definitely feel a little more timid and like my face is just sticking out there ready to hit the ground on these gnarly downhills. What are you doing? Practicing for the race. Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in today as we take a look at 200% helmets and try to answer the question of, is it worth going to a lightweight pedal friendly full face or keeping our lightweight traditional open face helmets while out mountain biking? We'd like to thank CompetitiveCyclist.com for helping us make this video today. Both of these helmets can be found on their website. And if you use Lone Wolf 15, you will get a 15% discount on all applicable items throughout their store. They've got a ton of stuff and uh, we really appreciate their partnership in helping us test and review a ton of products. So be sure to check them out at the link below. First up, we have the 100% Trajecta and the new 100% Altus helmet. We've been riding in both of these extensively over the last few months. If you've seen any of our um, you know, back to basics or other bike review videos lately, we've been wearing one of these two helmets and we really like the comfort, the fit, and, and trust the safety that's inside. So speaking of safety, let's start off with the Smart Shock rotational system. It is found in both of these helmets. The Trajecta has a 13 point system, whereas the Altus has 11. Uh, just real estate, I guess, has uh, something to do with that, as well as a higher price point of the Trajecta. Now, these are essentially floating elastomers that move 360 degrees and can also deform and, and get pressed into the helmet um, and help with kind of glancing oblique impacts or direct hits as well. The theory there is to help reduce energy transferred and trauma to the brain and rather than just relying on the EPS to crumple and absorb that energy, these smart shock elastomers will help do uh, some of the heavy lifting on the inside of the helmet. Both of the helmets feature multi-density EPS foam with an injection molded polycarbonate shell. The Altus is available in extra small, 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 medium, and large, extra large. While the Trajecta has two size specific molds in a small, medium, and a large, and extra large. So um, adjustability can be done a little bit through both of these helmets. This does not have any sort of like a ratchet or dial system. Instead, you'll be relying on uh, more like a traditional downhill or full face helmet, um, the pads inside to give you the fit needed. And you can kind of customize that with different pads. Whereas on the Altus, simply turn that dial, it will snug the helmet up, loosen it up for, you know, climbs, different shape heads, whatever that might be. So um, that could be a little bit of a benefit for comfort on long days on the bike, long climbs, etc. Speaking of long climbs, weight and ventilation are going to be two things to consider. Uh, we just weighed both of these helmets and we'll, we'll do it again here because I've hit my head too many times, even with a helmet on and I forget stuff. So 366 grams for the Altus and this thing I think was like 887. Let's see here, 887 grams. Big, big difference in weight there. Uh, obviously you've got 24 vents because of more space to have vents versus 14 ventilation ports on the Altus. Breathability there is on the top of the head is gonna be pretty similar between both helmets as you look at both of them from the front and you know air passing through, heat escaping out the back. So once I'm on the downhills, this helmet's pretty breathable, but long pedals through the Sahara Desert, really hot days, I think I prefer the Altus. There is something to be said for having a full face helmet. Again, we are riding harder, we're riding faster, we're taking trail and enduro and all mountain bikes onto trails that were reserved for downhill bikes 10, 15 years ago. And in those trails, we'd be wearing full armor, full face helmets and all that. And now we're going down there at speeds pretty much the same with just this little helmet and maybe a set of thin knee pads on, on us. So um, again, we have definitely made a transition to going a little bit more this route unless we're on, on short travel bikes or we're just going out, it always happens on a mellow cruise, right? I'm gonna take it easy today and then put your face in a rock. So if 
safety is a, an issue for you, if you find yourself pushing hard, you want to possibly lean towards this way. You're looking at 500-ish grams and, and a, a pretty notable difference in warmth. It's something that we deal with and we make the sacrifice for on most days. Like I said, unless it's super hot or we know we're not gonna be riding super aggressive or very gnarly trails, then, then we will stick to something like this because it is, it's a lot more comfortable, no doubt about it. So the Altus features an adjustable visor so that you can put goggles in, uh, glasses up here, get a little more airflow, lower it for when the sun's going down and you need a little bit more protection for the line of sight. That's all really nice things about this. Uh, both helmets also have washable antimicrobial moisture wicking padding on the inside. Uh, they are easy to remove on both helmets and have little Velcro to get them back in where they need to be. Chin pads have nice solid locking pins there to keep them in place. Again, this is, this is a really awesome helmet here. We have been wearing this thing a ton and have yet to take the pads out or wash them. Um, we like to run stuff as hard and dirty and nasty as we can get it for our you know, shorter test periods to try to mimic what someone might deal with over a couple of years of owning a product. But Fidlock snap closure system, which is super cool and uh, a new thing that 100% did for 2021, making it really easy with one hand, gloves or not, get that buckle on there. Uh, we really like the Fidlock stuff, super cool. On this, they are using the Nexus push release snap buckle. Traditional, fail safe, never, never lets you down, right? Um, we really like the straps on this helmet. Uh, they sit below the ear super nicely. They're flat. Uh, the adjustment system is pretty cool. For us and our head shape, it, it's definitely awesome and something we really like about this helmet as a whole. Most of the time you will see us in this helmet unless we're out doing a really mellow ride or just out filming a video and we're not gonna be charging too hard. Um, other than that, I'd say I'm gravitating more towards these pedal friendly full faces on 75 to 80% of my riding at this point um, is definitely gonna be in these helmets. Over the years, they've gotten lighter, more ventilated, more comfortable, and I can go out and put a few hours in one of these helmets and feel better every time I drop into a descent, which is gonna make me more confident, faster, and safer when things do go wrong. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys got some good information out of that. Both of these helmets are really awesome and by themselves would be totally worth our recommendation. If you're looking for an open face, this is a solid option. If you're looking for a pedal friendly full face, this is a great option as well. Um, I, I think it might be a little heavier than some on the market that we have tested on our website, um, but as far as comfort, looks, uh, style, safety features. This is definitely a rad helmet. And again, we will be wearing these a ton in the coming months. So stay tuned for more reviews. Please hit that subscribe button and thank you guys very much for watching. We hope to see you out on the trails.